Welcome to Your Health, where we explore the latest in health across the country. I'm Erica Cardenas. November is National Alzheimer's Disease Awareness Month, so we're talking about the impact this disease has on families. But before we get started, let's take a look at what's coming up on the show. Information about Alzheimer's disease and signs you should look for. Getting a new smile with the help of special technology. And how our daily use of cell phones is creating new aches and pains. We've got the fix. All that and more on this episode of Your Health. Five point eight million Americans are living with Alzheimer's disease, and here to tell us more is Terry Spitz, executive director of the Desert Southwest chapter of the Alzheimer's Association. Thank you so much for being here, Terry. Thank you for having me. First off, what is the mission of the Alzheimer's Association? Well, first, it's to end this terrible disease. You know, we want to end Alzheimer's disease. We want to accelerate research, which we're the largest nonprofit funder of. Alzheimer's and research in that area. We want to offer and enhance uh, care to everyone affected and we also want to really reduce the risk of dementia through brain health promotion. Now Arizona and Nevada are the top two out of three states for Alzheimer's growth. Wow, I was really surprised to learn that. Why, why do we think that is? It has to do with a lot of age. Um, you know, we have a growing retirement community in both states. So when you look at Arizona, we have 140,000 people living with Alzheimer's right now. So, and that number is, is growing. You know, as our state grows um, in the next five years, that's gonna grow to uh, around 43%. Yeah. So Terry, how does someone know if forgetfulness is due to aging or if there's if there's something more going on? You know, there's a lot of things that just come with aging, just those normal things like, you know, where did I put my keys? That's normal signs of aging. If I come in and I realize that I can't find them and I find them in the freezer, then that's, that's a sign. Uh, you know, on our website, um, alz.org, there are 10 signs that people can look at of, and they can kind of compare what, what is normal and what is the average kind of thing when you're aging and then what is something that's not right. Oh, you actually have a personal connection to the disease. Would you mind sharing more about that with us? When I came into this position, uh, you know, our family was experiencing, uh, you know, a family member that was going through dementia. I think what's really struck me the hardest is, you know, you think it's a disease that is mainly older people get it. And that is true, age is a, is a huge factor, over 65, but, you know, there's also early onset. And, you know, for me, knowing someone who, you know, got it at age 53 was, was really hard to, to even think that that could happen. And to see a family going through that. so. You know, we have our story, uh, but it's really all of the stories that are coming forward and people sharing of how they're, how they're dealing with it and how they're coping. It's, it's a cruel disease and it's something that we really need to work to solve. So Terry, why is it so important that caretakers reach out when they need help and, and really to take care of themselves? One of the things with, with caretakers is they can take on a lot of stress and we want to make sure that they're healthy too. Mm -hmm. It is not an easy task um, when you're caring for someone who's going through dementia or they have Alzheimer's and they're progressing. And while you think that it's something manageable at the front end, it gets harder and harder. And we want them to know that they're not alone, uh, that there is help if they do start you know, seeing health problems to make sure that they're seeing their doctor, that they're managing their stress. Now, Terry, let's talk about the research side of it. Is there any promising research on the horizon? Right now, there is a global race to find a blood biomarker to identify Alzheimer's dementia. And when we're able to do that, we can do it earlier and find interventions and really try to um, you know, help those people earlier rather than later when the disease has progressed. Well, thank you so much for thank being you. here with us today <laughs> and sharing this important information. If you'd like more information on the Alzheimer's Association, just head over to their website. Looking at our cell phones or tablets all day is actually creating new health problems for us, but thankfully the doctors at Honor Health have some tips to deal with TextNet. 
My name is Kevin Kalsa. I'm an orthopedic spine surgeon practicing here in Scottsdale, Arizona at Honor Health Thompson Peak. My job entails basically seeing people for all types of spinal injuries, spinal conditions, degenerative conditions like cervical spine, thoracic spine, and lumbar spine. And then I usually see clinic three times a week and I operate twice a week. And most of my surgeries are done here at Honor Health Thompson Peak. We're definitely seeing a lot of younger people coming in. Over the past five to six years, since the advent of the iPhone, especially cell phones becoming much cheaper, has changed what we see in our office. I am seeing a lot more teenagers come in with their parents complaining about neck pain and low back pain than I did probably five, six years ago. And in the general public, that's what we have started calling text neck. Your head, which weighs approximately 10 to 12 pounds in a neutral position with a neutral alignment, and you bring that neck into flexion, and for every 10 to 15 degrees of neck flexion, your neck weight is actually doubling. So you have these little tiny muscles of your neck which are holding your head up. And approximately at 60 degrees of neck flexion, your head weighs the same amount as a bowling ball. So you have your tiny little neck muscles which are holding your neck, trying to bring them back up. And you're constantly doing that throughout the day with an iPad or a cell phone. So it kind of makes sense when you come in at the end of the day and you're like, you go home and your neck is just absolutely aching. That's because of the fact that your little muscles are holding your neck up and trying their best to bring you back into alignment. So there are some ways to avoid text neck. One of the easiest ways is to obviously get away from that flexed posture of your cervical spine where you're constantly hunched over. So for the younger population, I tell their parents, you gotta have some text time where you give your kids cell phones for their particular usage for a particular amount of time and then you take the cell phone away. But for the adults, it's constantly reminding the adults that even though you're working and your work is dependent upon the cell phone, you gotta maintain a good posture, bring the cell phone up towards your eyes, not looking down all the time. If you're working at a computer or a laptop, you gotta make sure it's at an eye level or even higher, or maybe even get a stand-up desk at your workplace so you can stand up and work versus constantly sitting down and being in a flexed posture. It all comes down to a matter of balance. Yes, you have to work. Yes, you have to use your cell phone, and I do too. But at the same time, I understand, and so that's what I tell my patients is, have some balance. Take some time away from your electronic devices. Take some time to exercise, to check your posture, your low back posture. Maybe go see a physical therapist. And even in the gym, you can grab a trainer and just say, hey, why don't you help me figure out some new exercises that can correct my posture? So if you have any issues with neck pain like we discussed, Honor Health has a variety of physical therapists, specialists like myself. Please come visit our website and we'll be able to help you. Every 65 seconds, someone in the U.S. develops Alzheimer's disease. If your memory loss is disrupting your daily life, don't discount it. Get it checked by your doctor. Stick around, we have more to come on your health. How making the right dental choices can impact your life. And the difference rehab can make for those with pulmonary disease. Having dental issues can impact your overall life, and for one patient, he said finding New Day's smile gave him the new outlook on life he was seeking. My teeth, you know, through my, my childhood and to adulthood and everything, uh, I always had problems. It, they were starting to hurt. Uh, a lot of the teeth uh, were not functional anymore, so the, 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 the ongoing process involved taking some out, putting some in. I went through the partial denture uh, process. Jose came in with um, ill-fitting partial dentures. He wasn't able to wear his existing prosthesis. It was loose, it would pop off, and his other teeth were hurting. Following my children's advice, and they said, let's, uh, let's do something, Dad. It's, it's about time, you know? And so I, I got serious about it, and I went on the internet, and uh, I uh, strolled through a, you know, a few dentists and uh, the one that really struck me as being you know, the one I wanted to try was uh, Dr. Valadez. So with Jose, we went through a series of options with him. We took a CT scan, a full series of x-rays, a panoramic x-ray, and determined you know, um, that we could offer him either snap-in dentures or, or fixed bridges. Uh, but after discussing his options with him, he decided to do a full upper denture. He's been very happy with that. We uh, discussed how it was gonna go 
He, uh, everything was thorough, and I pretty much made up in my mind, just from the, the, the detail of our discussion, uh, the way he approached everything and made everything clear and, and precise, uh, I made up my mind, okay, this is uh, my last stop to a dentist. I found the one that's gonna do, do the job for me. So a snap-on denture is um, a denture that, like it says, it will snap it to implants. So uh, the way it works is uh, someone that's already lost all their teeth or is going to lose all their teeth, um, you prescribe um, some implants, um, typically, typically between two and four, ideally four, okay? Um, because it'll you know be more stable. I always give the analogy of a, of a table or a chair. It has four legs, it has more stability. The way it works is you place the implants, once the bone heals, you put um, attachments on the implants. Um, they're called locator attachments. And then inside the denture, you put something we call housings. Then the denture will simply snap on to these attachments and it stays in the mouth. That way the you know, patients could eat corn in the gob, chew gum, and their dentures are not flopping around. Plus they don't have to use that gooey um, adhesive stuff that everybody has. Uh, as far as the quality of my life, uh, 180 degree turn. It, it, it's changed me uh, in all aspects. You know, it, it's. Uh, I, I think that it gives you confidence. It reassures you, and it makes you feel as though you know what. Uh, you just got a new lease in life. Pulmonary disease can cause severe breathing issues in patients, but with pulmonary rehab, these patients can be helped immensely. Breathing is essential to life. If you can't breathe, it's stressful. Your body, your brain understands that you're not getting the air that you need and um, it goes into stress mode, which is flight or fight. Chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, COPD, is a group of diseases which includes emphysema, chronic bronchitis, and chronic asthma. In addition, you may have combinations of each of these diseases, which makes the group total to nine different categories of diseases. Uh, it can be genetic that uh, you get from your family, but more commonly it's an acquired disease, most commonly associated with smoking. The mainstay of treatment of chronic obstructive pulmonary disease is an assessment by a competent physician or pulmonologist with referral to a pulmonary rehabilitation program. I truly believe in pulmonary rehab. Uh, and it has a huge effect on uh, preventing progression of the disease. So uh, it gives my patients the knowledge to uh, have better control of the disease. I'm a firm believer in pulmonary rehab and its essential role in the treatment of any patient with any kind of lung disease. I was overjoyed to find out that there was a program in La Mesa. Just having a program in East County uh, has been a godsend, literally. I've been so impressed with just how much uh, your staff cares about each individual patient. No one ever hugs me after I give them an <laughs> inhaler, but um, I get hugs after I send people to pulmonary rehab, and especially La Mesa pulmonary rehab. Wow. The best part of coming to La Mesa rehab for um, pulmonary therapy is that I've got my life back again, and this is part of my life. Um, I wasn't even able to feed him before I, I got to the Mesa Rehab, and now I'm able to walk him up and down the stairs, and um, it's just been a wonderful experience for me. Now I can walk on the hillside. My breathing is much better. They smile, they laugh, uh, they rediscover the joy of living. So less than 3% of patients in the United States with COPD get pulmonary rehab. It's a huge problem and one that uh, pulmonologists and uh, our professional organizations are trying to address. Many voices create a loud noise, so it's really imperative that uh, people talk about this and uh, talk about it to their friends, to their neighbors, and just start getting people engaged. People ask me why I'm so passionate about pulmonary rehab. My own father died at the age of 72 from emphysema. I know we could have increased his lifespan by another 10 to 15 years if he had had access to a program like this. Pulmonary rehab is life-saving, and I want to bring this program to as many people as possible. Coffee is one of the world's most popular beverages. It's been shown to improve your memory and potentially decrease your risk 
for dementia. Up to three cups of black coffee per day are recommended, so make sure to drink your cup of joe. Stick around, we have more coming up on your health. Getting on a path to recovery is a struggle for many, but the experts at Holland Pathways are committed to help their clients triumph over addiction. Here at Holland Pathways, we offer life-saving addiction treatment in Wichita, Kansas. And we offer a full continuum of care. We start with medically monitored detox, all the way down to outpatient level of care. Our treatment is very trauma responsive we treat individuals uh, with respect to understanding where uh, the addiction started. We want to get to the root of addiction and fully understand each and every individual. Every individual who comes to us receives a treatment plan. They get a full assessment from our clinically trained and licensed staff. I had never gone through treatment centers before. What I found here was the education they give you about the effects it has on your, on the physical effects it has on your body, the effects it has on your mind, and it teaches you how to rebuild those parts of your body, how to, to live a healthy life. Holland Pathways is a 64 bed facility. There are five buildings on our campus. One is a clubhouse and the other four buildings are for uh, individuals to live in. The rooms are semi-private, meaning that there are two to a room. Quite a few of our staff um, are in recovery themselves, um, at least for one year. And I think that those staff who have been through addiction themselves and have made it to the other side provide a huge sense of hope to our clients. The staff here at Pathways is amazing. Everybody here was just so nice and welcoming and you know, if, if something does go wrong, if you are uncomfortable, they're more than happy to stop and pause and give you time to get yourself comfortable. You know, ask you if there's anything they can do for you. One of the benefits that I've experienced by going through my treatment with Holland Pathways, that you can go from inpatient to an intensive outpatient program, which is three nights a week. You get to continue your education, and your counseling. Knowing that that transition is there to continue on through an intensive outpatient program and once you're comfortable, you can decrease to a regular outpatient program that is only one night a week, was quite comforting and, and reassuring. When a client comes through our doors, they're usually at the darkest moment in their lives. And our goal at Holland Pathways is to provide life-changing addiction treatment. We want individuals to get well and to live a sober life by the time that they make it through treatment with us. Another way to show your brain some love is to eat a healthy and balanced diet that's lower in fat and higher in fruits and vegetables to help reduce the risk of cognitive decline. Some research shows that the Mediterranean diet is a great option. Stick around, we have more to come on your health. Maintaining a healthy weight is one of the best ways to prevent illnesses. The experts at North Vista Hospital share if weight loss surgery could be for you. I'm the director for Las Vegas Bariatrics and also the director for surgery at North Vista Hospital. Bariatric surgery is my passion. I've been doing bariatric surgery going on 15 years now. North Vista has been doing bariatric surgery literally more than 15 years. We have consistent bariatric teams. It's very streamlined. You have the same faces that know my every move, that know everything we need, and that makes everything so much easier. It moves smoother, and that's why you have this excellence and the quality of care being maintained. 
Clients who are a good candidate for bariatric procedure has a BMI of 30 or greater, or an individual who may be 50 pounds or more overweight. Think about your lifestyle. Are you having trouble enjoying the things that you love to do? Going to the park, going hiking, riding a bike, flying on an airplane. So think about the health issues and the comorbidities associated with uh, obesity, such as diabetes, hypertension, obstructive sleep apnea, joint pain, back pain. You know, a lot of these things drive people to seek out help and weight loss procedures. Also, individuals who have actual eating disorders, we address that. They see the dietitian, there's nutritional counseling. We have support groups that clients can come to before surgery. So our dietitian guides them through that and we get these things under control. Being here at North Vista Hospital is an accredited facility for bariatric surgery and it maintains its accreditation through the uh, MBSAQIP. We stick with the standard procedures and the safe procedures. Most commonly we perform the uh, gastric sleeve. The other procedure that we do here is the Ruin Y gastric bypass. In addition, we do a lot of revisional procedures now. We're taking a lot of lap bands out and we're doing revisional surgeries to follow. After weight loss surgery, with weight loss, it's dramatic. I see it day in and day out. We have patients walking back into the office off of their diabetes medicine. They're off of their blood pressure medicine. Their pains are better. Here at North Vista Hospital, we welcome anyone who wants free information. It's about a one hour talk where I talk about the procedures, I talk about bariatric surgery, we talk about obesity and the comorbidities, which are the health issues associated with obesity. We talk about the process going through the program and the process after. There's no commitment on your part. It's all about free information. And we guide you through the process and we're here for you. Thank you for joining us on Your Health. I'm Erica Cardenas. See you next time.